This edition of Mac Voices is sponsored by Smile, the makers of world-class software like PDF Pen for Mac, PDF Pen Pro for Mac, PDF Pen for iPhone and iPad, PDF Pen Scan Plus for iPhone and iPad, Text Expander for Mac, and Text Expander for iPhone and iPad. Learn more about all their great products at smilesoftware.com. Welcome to Mac Voices. This is the talk of the Apple community, and I'm Chuck Joyner. Folks, I'm happy to tell you that we have something today that we've been working on literally for months, trying to get this scheduled, and it just seems like we could not put the, the times together until right now, and we finally got it done. So first, I want to let you know that Gene McDonald is here. Gene, welcome, as always. Well, thanks for having me, Chuck. I'm glad you're here. And for his first time on Mac Voices, Manton Reese of micro.blog. Manton, welcome. I'm so glad that we finally got to do this. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for having me. So we're going to talk today about micro.blog. Um, Manton is the, is it, should I say creator, founder? Um, uh, yeah, well, <laughs> <laughs> however you want to say it, creator, founder. Okay, just he's the guy. He's the guy. And Gene, you're doing community management for micro.blog as well as a bit of evangelism. Yes, that's right. Okay. So now we have the now we have the titles laid out. So let's let's talk about what micro.blog is. And I would whoever wants to answer that, answer that. Um, I think Matt to to, to uh, start and uh, I can fill in if it's many things to many people, that's for sure. But in a nutshell, I think Manton has it down. That sounds very Zen, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I have it down. This is still something we kind of struggle with, but it, it really is two things. It's a new social network built around blogs, and so you can reply, and there's like a timeline, kind of like Twitter, and it's also a blog hosting platform. So you can have your own blog and domain name, your own site with your own posts. And so it kind of mixes those two things together. And in the middle, you have uh, our platform and kind of the unique qualities that come from being based around the open web and blogging. Okay, so that's one of the, the key characteristics of, of micro.blog is it is a bit more open than some of the alternatives. Yes. Uh, I mean, a bit more. It's it's pretty much night and day compared to, say, Twitter or Facebook because our platform, uh, I mean, it, because it's two things. One, it's a blogging platform. So as I like to say, uh, easier than WordPress and cheaper than Squarespace. But uh, you could just host your blog on our platform and go your merry way. But if you're interested in interacting with other bloggers, uh, we have a timeline that looks like a Twitter timeline, but uh, it is in fact um, posts from individual bloggers that appear on their blogs that they control and get amalgamated into a timeline that um, where people can share and interact with each other. Okay. So, <laughs> yeah, there are a lot, a lot of things here I want to get, I want to get into. But Manson, first of all, why a social network right now when it seems like there are so many out there? Um, I mean, obviously the, the the big ones: Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, um, and then there are, there's a whole tier of what I will respectfully call second tier social networks, and maybe there might even be a third or fourth tier. Why did you decide to, to decide to create something along those lines? Yeah, that's an interesting way to think about it, because in some ways, I think there are fewer social networks now, it feels like, than there used to be, because Facebook and Twitter are so successful that there's so much of the content on the internet has been con concentrated into those two places. So I actually think that there are other social networks and Instagram is a part of Facebook, but a lot of people think of it as its own social network. Um, but in some ways I feel like it, it, there used to be more choices in social networks, even just going back five, 10 years. And I think there's no better time than now to start a new social network. It's really difficult because you have these platforms that are, they, they're just, they're so big and so well known and everybody's on them. Um, but at the same time, I think a lot of good things can happen with more social networks kind of 
getting some of that power that's concentrated in, into hands of just a couple websites and spreading it out over the web a little bit is kind of how the open web was intended to be, where you have your own site, certainly, but also smaller communities like micro.blog. Okay. Um, so, so then aside from some, some obvious privacy issues and some obvious inflammatory political aspects of, of some <laughs> of the, the, the larger ones, why do I want to be on micro.blog? Well, I think if you are interested, um, there's a, there's a lot of reasons, as I alluded to at the beginning, people have uh, different reasons for being on micro.blog. But for one thing, it is about as easy as Twitter to use. So for people who just want to keep doing those kind of micro posts, and uh, but they don't want to lose all of their work into the Twitter, you know, and, you know, I don't know what's a nice word for the big <laughs> the big heap of tweets that is Twitter. Uh, and they want their posts to be accessible on a site that they control and that they design, as opposed to always having everything in a Twitter UI and only having the features that Twitter makes available. So if you if you want to uh, have continue to make that. Uh, kind of contribution to the general discussion, but you also want to be able to uh, keep your own tweets or, but as we call them, you know, their posts or micro posts on your, uh, somewhere where you control, then you want to be on micro.blog. You can actually cross post from micro.blog to Twitter. So you, you know, by posting first on micro.blog on your micro blog. So it is your blog when you are part of our community, every person in the community has a blog. Um, it might be a really simple blog that just consists of micro posts, or it might be something rather uh, complex and um, uh, with a lot of aspects to it. So again, people can choose what level of complexity they want. So that would be one reason to get on micro.blog. Another is if you want it to be blogging. So one of the things that we know is that when Twitter, I'm really talking mostly about Twitter and Facebook, but there could be other culprits. When, when they started to become the dominant arena of conversation, people started to blog less on their own sites. And people admitted that, myself included. I thought, well, it's way easier to write a tweet and then everybody sees it. And if I really have something to say important, I could write a longer blog post and post a link to it, but you never end up doing that. And so <laughs> you just stick with what is easy. So um, people who want to be blogging more have found that micro.blog makes it easier for them to do that, not just the short posts. We also support longer posts with titles if that's what you want to post. And um, I talk to the members of the community regularly. I have a podcast every week called Micro Monday, where I interview somebody on micro.blog. And so many people have said to me, wow, I have blogged more in the last year on micro.blog than I did like my first 10 years of having a blog. So, you know, it's an easy way to be a, a blogger and keep whatever you want on your blog, whether it's a photo blog or a journal or, you know, your political opinion pieces, if that's what you want to do. So, um, so th that's a couple of reasons. There's, there's, as I said, that, um, so, and people like the community as well. They like where, being in a place where um, the, there's a lot of respect, um, mutual respect among the people who, um, who contribute and who interact. We have a community manager, me, who keeps an eye on things and, and you know, makes sure that people are following the community guidelines, which we was one was the first thing that Manton and I did together as we drafted the community guidelines and made sure that we had a set of rules that we felt was uh, strong and enforceable and would combat the harassment that a lot of people, you know, 
experience on the bigger unmanaged social networks. I, I have to go down that that avenue just for a second um, mm-hmm. because okay, so, this this is where it gets a little sticky um, because you have community guidelines, so you have quote unquote acceptable behavior and quote unquote unacceptable behavior. And you tread when you start defining unacceptable behavior, then you tread the line into censorship, and that's what a lot of people. The issue a lot of people will raise if you say, "Hey, you're, you're out of line." Mm-hmm. So how, how do you deal with that? Mm-hmm. As, either, as a community manager, Gene or Manton, you as the uh, the founder, and to, to keep it what you want it to be. Yeah. Manton, I, I think should answer this because he he had a very clear uh, vision, which is what in enticed me to want to be the community manager. Yeah, so having having a safe community where people can feel like they can post and express themselves and not scared that, you know, whatever they're going to post, they're going to be attacked or harassed, that has been an important thing from the very beginning and getting that foundation right from the very beginning because we've seen so many other big networks, they just kind of the beginning, they just kind of winged it and they didn't plan for what would happen when they got big. So that is really important. One of the ways that we answer that kind of censorship question is the you have your own blog where your posts are and you can have your own domain name for your own blog, which we encourage. And that actually is really powerful just because it allows you to kind of own the content and control it and move it. And sometimes you do have to move it. That's one of the, the ways we can protect the community is if someone is causing a problem and causing trouble for the community, um, using hate speech or harassing people, things that are obviously way against our guidelines, we can ask them to move, but because they have their own blog, their own domain name, they can just move their site somewhere else and let the community um, not have to, to to deal with that anymore. And we hope this doesn't happen very often, and I don't think it will. Right now, we're still really small and growing. But the fact that we can do that really allows us more kind of control of staying on top of community issues. Um, and um, the uh, just uh, being mindful of that, having that balance between posting to your own site, but also protecting the community. Uh, that's just been a goal from the very beginning. Um, something we think is uh, what makes Microdot Blog kind of special. Yeah, please don't misunderstand. I, I I agree, and I think that it's it's definitely something that all the social media networks are trying to figure out. Um, try because it, you know, what, one one person's pro this is somebody else's anti that, right. and mm-hmm. it becomes yep. a really really tough thing to to uh, to, to balance out. Yeah, and it, I think it's even trickier on one of the big social networks because, like, if you think back of what I was trying to say about domain names and having like ownership of your content that you can move on Twitter, your tweets are on Twitter, and if you're banned from Twitter, your tweets you can't move them. I mean, tweets only are on Twitter, right? Twitter.com/slash whatever your your tweets are at, and that's a it seems kind of subtle, but that's actually a big difference. Um, than the way we approach it, where your posts are in the micro.blog timeline, but your blog posts are blog posts on your own site also. And so if we have to ask you to leave, for example, you can still post to your own site. That's how the web is supposed to work. You can still post to your own site. You just do not have the right to um, bother other people. And so on Twitter, it's not like that. And I think that kind of ties their hands sometimes. So they are very hesitant to get involved and make these kind of really hard decisions sometimes. Um, just as you said, it's hard to know what to do with some, some, some tweets, for example, and they have to really be sure before they block anyone because when that person is off Twitter, they're off. They're, there's nowhere else they can go. And it's a little bit different with Microdot blog because people can still post to their own blog and they, that's how the web works. You know, you can continue to post to your own blog, but you don't have the right to harass anyone or, or bother other people in the community. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, just a little, um, 
bit more I want to say about that notion that somebody's pro this is someone else's anti that. We don't censor political speech. People can say what they want. They can say, you know, they can have strong feelings. Um, what they can't do is, uh, you know, use, attack either, you know, groups, you know, that are subjected normally to hate speech, or they can't harass a person by with at mentions, you know, that um, end up in that person's timeline, uh, it, you know, unwanted, um, repeatedly posting unwanted at mentions is one of the guidelines that you could cross and we would deal with it. And we don't necessarily ask people to move. That's not step one. <laughs> that's step last. Uh, we have, you know, that's part of my job is to uh, let people know when we're concerned uh, and see if they don't uh, manage themselves. Uh, another thing that I've noticed about micro.blog, and this happens pretty regularly, is because there is this feeling kind of a safe space where people are civil, um, people like uh, who participate in the conversation, if they cross the line a little bit, if they're a little bit strident and, and then the other person is a little bit offended and then the next person, they, they, it ends up in, in a, a kind of an apology circle because the first person says, gee, I'm really sorry, I was a little strident. And the other person says, gee, I'm really sorry, I probably shouldn't have put it like that. And I see this happen on a regular basis. I keep an eye on, you know, people's conversations if you know something seems like it might be going down a path that you know would make other people uncomfortable and generally it's self-managed people uh as it you know would happen in real life in a group of people who you know know how to carry on civil discourse yeah absolutely and one of the nice things about micro.blog right now is we're you know still getting started i mean two years in to, you know, since the launch, but still, still growing. And one of the nice things is that you kind of have to go out of your way to join. I mean, it's not the default like Twitter or Facebook is. It's not like the default place that everybody is. So everybody that's there for the most part is there because they want something better. They want a better community. They want, a, you know, something better with their blog or a different you know type of community to interact with. And so, I feel like people start off being pretty positive and that also really helps uh, exactly as Gene was talking about. And I, maybe I need to apologize because I certainly didn't mean to focus on the negative. It just seems like that right now is such a big aspect of, of evaluating social media that it mm -hmm. has to be one of the first things on the agenda to talk about, about it. So. Yep, but, absolutely. And, you know, people are more aware than ever. Uh, about the problems with, you know, the big, uh, massive social networks, um, what you mentioned, but also things like privacy. Um, people are just more aware of the issues and the trade-offs when you're joining a, a big free social network, you know, the you're trading up something uh, related to privacy or control. And so, yeah, people are just really aware of that. And we are also obviously really aware of that. And that's, it's all kind of built into the foundation of micro.blog. So let's, let's sort of turn this part of the discussion on its, on its side and, and explain, if you will, the structure of micro.blog. Because Gene, you said everybody gets a blog. I think, man, you mentioned timeline. And I admit, I, it took me a little while to try to figure this out. If I post to my timeline, does it go to my blog? If I post to my blog, does it go to the timeline? Can I turn the timeline on or off? Can I turn the blog on or off? Um, it's it's rather unique and, and in a good way, but it can be a little confusing, I think, if you don't really understand the, the metaphors going on at first. That's, yeah. that's a Manton question. <laughs> that's a Manton, yeah. <laughs> I'll try to answer it. it, it this is something that we have gotten better at explaining, but it is a little bit confusing sometimes for people that are just joining. So because there's a little more flexibility than kind of the out of the box social network experience, the, the timeline is what we call the main experience for like seeing the posts from people you follow and seeing replies and seeing conversations. So, you know, you sign into micro.blog 
and you can follow some users and then those users post show up in the timeline just like you would have on Twitter. It's a strictly reverse chronological timeline, new posts at the top. And then if there's any replies, you start you see those you know in the timeline as well and you can click through and interview conversations. And then kind of separately and away from that is your blog where you could have your own domain name. So I blog manton.org is my domain name. I've been blogging there for years and that's hosted on micro.blog now. And when I post, the posts go there and then they also go into the timeline. So anybody following me can see those posts. They can reply. And um, so it's kind of those, those two parts, but we try to put them together in a way that has a, a good user experience, a user, you know, user interface that's hopefully as simple to use as another social network. Um, but there still is that kind of separation with the blog. And it is possible, in fact, to like jump in and disconnect your blog from the timeline. So every once in a while someone will join and they decide they, they want the blog features. They want to be able to blog and all the features and the themes and you know all the control they have over that. Um, and using the apps to post, we have native apps for iOS and Mac. Posting to, to your blog makes it really easy. But maybe they don't want the timeline. So you can disconnect that if, if you choose. But by default, you kind of get both. You get the, the social network experience, being able to follow people and reply, and you also get your blog. But the replies, if, if, if the three of us engage in a conversation um, with, the, with using the ads and all, um, that does not necessarily feed back to my blog, does it? Right. Right now, the, the replies are separate. A lot of people, kind of by default, they don't want those replies on their blog. So we kind of store them off to the side so that you can view conversations. And it's, it's kind of uh, associated with the blog post, but it's not actually on your blog. I think that if you think back to kind of earlier blogging, you know, you would have comments on a blog and those kind of over time got kind of a bad reputation for, you know, people would put spam in them and they just, it would just kind of like got out of control with, with blog comments. And so a lot of people would disable them. And so by default, we don't show any of those. We've been thinking uh, about ways to bring that back as an option for people that want to take that conversation that's on micro.blog. So I post to my blog and let's say a few people reply and there's a conversation about that blog post have an option to pull that back into your blog so that you can view that conversation on your own site. So by default, that's not the way it works, but people have asked for it and we've, we've thought about ways to allow that as an option. Smile and PDF Pen are sponsoring this edition of Mac Voices. You probably think of PDF Pen as a productivity tool, and you would be right. The ability to manipulate PDF documents is critical, no matter what business you are in. The ability to edit PDFs to correct text, copy and paste text while retaining fonts and formatting, annotate a PDF with both voice and comments makes it an essential part of your productivity toolkit. But you also might think of PDF Pen as a security and privacy utility because of its ability to securely redact information in a PDF. And I mean redact, not just draw black boxes over text that can easily be removed by someone who wants to see what you don't want them to see. Or PDF Pen might be an accessibility tool. I recently scanned a document that I wanted to be able to use with a text-to-speech program. The PDF as I received it couldn't be read, but after running it through PDF Pen's optical character recognition, every single word became something that could be read out loud. And edited, if necessary, of course. So what is PDF Pen? Whatever you need it to be, but you have to be using it first. Visit SmileSoftware.com right now and download a free trial of PDF Pen and see what you've been missing. That's PDF Pen from Smile the makers of world-class software. And be sure to check out the even more powerful features of PDF Pen Pro while you're there. Thanks to Smile for their ongoing support of Mac Voices. So where is all this happening? Because, I mean... <laughs> I know, like that. I, you yeah, think, well, like, you, you know, that's just, you are asking the, the questions that uh, everybody has been asking us. So that's well, all that, the I that, smile. That, yeah, I mean, it's you know the, the the idea of setting up a social network is is admirable, but, but admirable, but there are servers to consider and security to consider and all those things that you know if if you're putting up a social network, people expect it to be available because that's the way they're communicating, for, maybe for pleasure, maybe for work, maybe for a little bit of both, 
Um, so, so how are you doing the back end of this? Yeah, we have servers that um, that that run all of this. Um, so, we have servers, database servers, and web servers, and and that handle all the parts of micro.blog, you know, to make it work. The timeline. We have an API that, you know, we hope is as open as possible and adopts a bunch of standards so that other apps can be written and used, you know, with micro.blog. That's something that's, again, has been there from the beginning is wanting to encourage like third-party developers. So there's a couple different iPhone apps that people can use and we want to make that as easy as possible. So we have a bunch of servers that run all the backend stuff. And also if you want your blog hosted on our servers, then we can do that for you too. And that's where, yeah, that's where, that's where it goes <laughs> in the cloud, I guess, as they say. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I have to ask because I've, I'm paying for, you know, my subscription. We should probably talk a little bit about what it costs, mm -hmm. but are you, I, I don't know how else to ask it. Are you able to sustain this with, with the fees that you're charging now? Because they're ridiculously low. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's I guess that's I guess that's good. I, the we've tried to get this balance of so we charge five dollars a month for the basic hosting, and it's been a little tricky to figure out the right pricing. But I think I I like that because it's not free, but it's not twenty dollars a month or you know whatever some WordPress host might charge. It's kind of in the middle because you're never going to make really everybody happy. Uh, there's some people that that only kind of want to approach it from the social network side and they're used to never paying anything for social networks. So it has to be low to make it uh, as accessible as possible to the most uh, amount of people. Um, but on the other side, we have a lot of really powerful features in blog hosting and we've added so many over the last you know year or two, including like podcast hosting and photos and now videos. And so, we 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 think we're very competitive with a lot of blog hosting services, but we don't want to charge as many as much as those because it still needs to be affordable to people who don't need all the, all the bells and whistles and they just want a real basic uh, setup. So, kind of a long way to answer your question, but the uh, that's that's the pricing, and you know we're still small and growing. There's still a lot to do, uh, still a lot to get the word out, mm -hmm. but that's kind of the business model of um, you can use micro.blog for free, but the basic hosting is $5. Uh, well, I've, we have to, we have to say it. I'm, I'm sorry, folks, if you're tired of hearing it, but if you, if you're not paying anything, then you are the product that is being sold. <laughs> so, and that's not the case here because if, if I have not seen any advertising anywhere on micro.blog at all, um, you know, the, so no. I, I expect to be paying something. In fact, <laughs> I remember a time when, you know, people were begging Twitter to charge them and not have all the, all the garbage that you have to deal yeah. with. So, you know, this along from this perspective, um, you're sort of in that vein. Um, but I also have to, have to ask you, you know, with everything you're adding and the way you, you have expanded the services, is that something you see as sustainable at that price level? I sure hope so. And I want it to be, but is it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We, I mean, we're, we're definitely in startup mode in the sense, you know, that it's, we're in the middle of our second year, but our, our audience and our user base our, our customer base, I should say is growing. Um, and, I think we don't need to be we don't we don't need one million users. I don't think <laughs> so, uh, to to have a sustainable uh, a sustainable enterprise here. And uh, we are a tiny company. I mean, you're looking at it right now. Plus, uh, our fr our friend Jonathan Hayes, who also works on the apps with Manton, so. You know, we don't have the kind of overhead of some like venture capital, you know, backed project that needs to get all the users in and then figure out how they're going to make money off of them. We we know that blog hosting is a sustainable business model. I mean, we, we've seen it 
working, you know, as long as blogs have been around and, and website hosting in general has been around as a company, you know, that's what we're offering. And uh, so we felt pretty solid with that from the beginning because we didn't have some crazy idea for how we would make money. <laughs> we, <laughs> we had a very old fashioned idea of how we would make money. Yeah. And I mean, getting back to the, the big social networks like Twitter, I mean, they, as you said, with, with venture capital and now being publicly traded companies, I mean, they, they have to operate at a completely different scale. They have to be huge and to all those little pennies from, from ads, you know, it requires many, many users to, to add up to a business where we don't have that limitation. Exactly. We can be smaller. And, um, we, the, the, yeah, the $5, I, I feel like, I feel like is a really, really good bargain. And we also offer another plan for $10 a month where we offer podcast hosting. Also, I think a really great <laughs> bargain. Yeah. Maybe in the future, you know, we'll expand that even more and have other other options. But I I do want it to be as accessible as possible because we want to reach a lot of people that could be blogging. Because I've been getting back to what Gene said earlier about just the tools being easier. And if they're easier, more people will blog and write on their own website. So if we started at like $20 a month or something, we would just be cutting off a lot of people that I think would get a lot of value out of it. So trying to have that kind of balance in the middle. So I, I, a little bit selfishly, I have to ask here, as far as the, the, uh, the podcasting hosting, because that really is intriguing me. I mean, I know that you, Gene, I think you call yours microcasts um, for obvious yeah. branding reasons. Um, <laughs> Well, when we when we first offered that as an option, we weren't sure how large uh, uh, files we were going to accept. So we started at a fairly low level, and we thought that we it would be interesting for people to use it for short, like five to ten minute, uh, you know, episodes. Which Manton has a, a, a true microcast where he his episodes are are that short. I've called mine microcasts at the beginning, and they've kind of edged into medium casting <laughs> uh, and I hope not to to go into the macro casting level but as we after we uh launched the feature and we had a chance to see how people would use it we were able to be more generous with the file sizes that people could upload to the servers because and then so they could have something longer than five to ten minutes yeah, and so it's there's a limit on the upload size for uh, podcast for, for each episode or for video or even a photo, although photos are never that big. But um, and that's how we kind of approach it. I, I really thought that it, initially it would just be yeah, like five or ten minutes, but now depending on you know MP3 settings, you know you can have longer, you know half an hour or even an hour episodes and. So far, it's, it's working really well. I mean, I'm really excited to see what people post. The idea was to enable potentially new kinds of podcasts, just to make it easier for someone to start a short podcast, not really overthink it, start a podcast, put some episodes out there and see if it resonates with people. And we've seen some of that, some people experimenting with different ideas. Because when you have a short podcast, you can kind of experiment and you don't have to it just it's easier to edit it's easier to post and it doesn't require as much to host it either um so, so that's been really fun and yeah the, uh, having tools you know we have an iphone app that's dedicated to just recording and posting short little podcasts called wavelength and uh just been really fun to see what people do with it i i, I love the fact that you are exploring so many ideas uh, so many avenues of creativity here to hand them to folks and say, here, take this tool and see what you want to do with it. Uh, and, you know, and obviously if somebody wants to turn it into something super significant, then they either need to talk to you, you know, individually or maybe go somewhere that uh, some of those capabilities are, are built in right now. But on the mm -hmm. other hand, it sounds like you're growing those capabilities and adding more. And that's, that's, but been one of the things that's intrigued me. And I'm sorry we haven't had this conversation before, but I'm kind of glad because micro.blog has evolved clearly in the time that it was taking the three of us to get together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> and even if you just think of short posts, I mean, G mentioned, you know, we have longer, you can have longer blog posts too. And the podcast kind of followed that model, which is when Microdotblog launched, all the posts were short. You know, it was like 280 characters or less. That was when Twitter was 140. Of course, now Twitter's 280 as well. But um, but we quickly realized that, like, if you have a blog host on a microdot blog, you're gonna want you're gonna want long posts. Sometimes you're gonna want an essay that you write about something, or are you just gonna have a short post that kind of expands. So we do things like, you know, you're typing a short tweet like blog post, and if you type, you know, quote unquote too much, uh, you know, it expands and allows you to add a title, and you can just turn it into a full blog post. And so I, I kind of see that as a natural you know, extension of just starting small and being able to it, it kind of growing with you a little bit and podcasts are the same way. You can start small and then if some of your episodes are a little bit longer, that's fine. Right. Um, discoverability. How do I find out how, what's the easiest way I should say? There are probably multiple ways, um, but how do I find out who's on micro.blog amongst my friends or the people that I would like to connect with? Um, <laughs> well, that's a, an interesting question because it it is not as straightforward as you're used to on Twitter, um, and that's by design. So one of the things uh, that Manton uh, thought through before launching the platform was one of the ways harassment comes in is just that strangers find you and then they dog pile on you. Um, so we don't have, you can't search for a person, right? Manton, maybe you should help me out here. Yeah, because... we've been expanding the search. So if you know exactly who you're looking for, like their name, you can search for them um, if you know their username. Um, but w where we limit things is like, like, for example, like we don't have like the popular posts and trends and like all these other areas that on Twitter where right. posts can be exposed. Um, and that, yeah, that's kind of getting to your point is just the, there's a lot of places on other social networks where you can kind of run into strangers and they can run into you and, you know, there might be a conflict there. <laughs> and so we try to be a little more deliberate. Yeah. One of the things when we started out, you couldn't see who was following you and um, and you still can't. Uh, that's by design as well, uh, which I keep saying that only because when I first started working with Manton, I was like, oh, Manton, you forgot to put in follower counts into this. And he says, no, we're not having those because we don't want it to be a popularity contest. We want people you know, or no, uh, no likes, no retweets. Like if you want to interact with somebody, you actually have to reply to their post and say, Hey, I like that post. Or sometimes I just even reply with an emoji, which is the micro dot blog <laughs> equivalent of a like. And, uh, but, um, what we do though, is that you can look at who is following somebody else. Um, so, I mean, I'm sorry, I take that back. You can look at who someone else is following. Um, and therefore, like Chuck, you could look at my list of the people I follow. There's probably people on that list that you would follow. Um, that's probably the easiest way to find people that you know is by checking out who, um, who the people you already know are following, I would say. Um, then we also have a feature and it's accessible both in the apps and on the web called Discover, where you can see a kind of cross section of posts from the community that Manton and I curate by hand. So that, you know, we, we just put in, you know, things that look new from new people. So the current uh, members can see who's new coming in, who has something to say, but also the new members or people who haven't even decided whether they're going to check out micro.blog can still look at the Discover uh, timeline and see, get a sense of like what the community feels like. And so that's where a lot of people find new people to follow that they didn't even know. Those are some really interesting choices. Um, 
I mean, it's the, the, when you started to explain it, I'm, I'm thinking of like a speakeasy where you have to know the secret knock to be able to. <laughs> Um, and, and, but then you co- took me away from that. And, and at first I wasn't sure that those were good ideas, but now I, I kind of see the wisdom of them yeah. it, and it goes, I guess, to what Madden you were saying about, about a safe space, about, you know, you, if I, if I know somebody's on there, I can probably find them, or maybe I can find somebody that, that probably is, <laughs> is following them and, and connect that way. But it's not just a, a free for all of, okay, I, I, I log on and I, you know, follow 200 people because there are people that I follow or know from other social networks. Yeah. Right. And people sometimes ask for more of the kind of like, show me people I'm already following on Twitter and that sort of thing. And we've kind of resisted doing that also for all these reasons we just talked about, but also because just because you're following someone on Twitter doesn't mean that they're active on micro.blog and posting. So I think it's a better experience if you're following people that are posting on micro.blog. And of course we want everybody to be active on posting, but some people post more than others. So it's a different there's a different community, a different, uh, different type of social network. And so you, if you just kind of take exactly what you had on Facebook and try to move it over, that's not going to be the best experience. And so just yeah. kind of trying to guide people in the right direction, I think helps. Um, but, uh, you know, this, it's a challenge. And like the, the, follow, the way Gene described, the way we kind of updated the following lists has helped a lot and you know we do things like you know if you click on someone to see who they're following we take out the people you're already following so it's a little easier to go in and say okay this person's following you know 10 people that i'm not following already so who are those people and um the discover is also a really big part of this being able to have a place where posts are highlighted um to discover new people that you weren't following you know, on any other social network. Mm-hmm. I, this is really, really interesting. And I guess I admit that at, at first, and I've gotten away from it, but I still think I have a tendency to think of it as something like Twitter. Um, it's probably more like Twitter than Facebook. Um, so I, I tend to think of that way. And now you are making me see it in a completely different light. Uh, and so I, I guess the thing to to take away here is that micro.blog is different. It is, mm-hmm. yes, it's a social network. It has some similarities, but it is different fundamentally from just about anything else out there. Yeah, I, I don't know of anything that's even close to being similar, to be honest. Uh, but it is. it does look like Twitter and that is a good thing because people sort of understand that social media paradigm, but at the same uh, time, they expect certain things that are not in micro dot blog intentionally. And generally what it's so interesting over time, just to see as the community, not only gets bigger, but also people have been there for, you know, a couple years and uh, more people than just me say, you know, in the beginning, I was uncomfortable with this feeling that I couldn't see how many followers I had. Like, how did I know if anybody was reading my, my posts or, and now I I realize I was addicted to those kinds of numbers, the, the metrics of the followers and also the likes, and especially like weaning ourselves off of likes uh, has been a pretty positive experience, I think, for everybody who's noticed the difference. You know that they, they that when you go back on, say, Instagram or Twitter, you're like, ah, a likes. How many likes did I get? You know, and I, I, I would like Twitter. Twitter's thinking about getting rid of likes, which is interesting. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know. I thought it was the juice that their engine ran on, but uh, so. Uh, I think Instagram is is experimenting with removing some of that as well or or hiding it by default. But yeah, that when we launched the idea of not showing how many followers someone had was so strange that I didn't know if we'd be able to stick with it, to be honest. Like I thought <laughs> at one point I was like, enough people are going to have pushback against this that we're going to have to add it. And luckily, you know, we took our time and and realized that it worked out great because I mean, I think it's worth going into a little more detail why it, why it works out so well. And one of the reasons is 
the there's so many it doesn't matter how much you try not to judge someone based on how many followers they have everybody does it if someone has 10,000 followers you think oh they must have something great to say and if someone has five followers you think oh maybe I'm not going to follow this person and that's kind of terrible like we should let the content speak for itself um you know like what you're posting the beautiful photo you took or some thought you had on whatever the, of the day that should determine whether we want to follow this person and read their posts not some number because there's a lot of other things that affect that number mm -hmm. and um so removing that just removes that whole like level of judgment and uh, i think it puts everybody on a playing level playing field I, I think it's worked out really really well to wrap this up i want to make sure that we touch on um the applications that you you all just kind of both mentioned in passing uh, uh desktop apps ios apps um for interacting uh with with micro.blog because i I'm, i think that a lot of people are interacting with whatever their social network is it's seldom in the browser it's it's usually in a dedicated app so what does micro.blog offer that's Manton. <laughs> sure. We have a native iOS app, Mac app. We actually have a couple iOS apps. We have uh, that Wavelength, that app I mentioned that's just for like posting podcasts. And we also have an app called Sunlit, which has been around in different forms um, for a little while. Jonathan Hayes, um, who uh, helps on the apps, uh, he and I worked on it before Micro.blog, and then we kind of adapted it for micro.blog and the idea with that app is just all about photos so a little more like an instagram experience you you log in with your micro.blog account and instead of seeing the default timeline you see a timeline that's tailored just to photos so everything else is taken out and you just see the photos and the conversations around photos and it has some different features for posting collections of photos so that's been really fun to work on too but those are the main apps mac app the ios app and then we have some third-party apps that we link to. Um, there's a couple iOS apps. There's one called Icro, and there's one called uh, Gluon. And those are new ones in beta. But um, there's been a, a couple apps like that. And there's also an app for Android um, and you know, other, other uh, apps like from the indie web community that work really well with micro.blog. And even older like Mac apps like MarsEdit, you can use MarsEdit um to post to micro.blog and that is really useful especially if you're writing like a longer blog post and you want a dedicated app for that wow i did not know that one i will be using that one because i use mars edit all the time so yeah oh, i do too yeah. i love it it's i i generally i use the mac micro.blog app for just posting quick short posts or photos i use the ios app but if I have a longer post, I'll often either write it in Mars Edit or I'll, or I'll have a draft of it and I'll, I'll copy it over to Mars Edit and post it. So I like is, longer posts are a little different than shorter posts. So sometimes it's nice to have a app that's just good for that. Yeah, agreed. Well, I want to thank you both for taking the time to, to explain some of this, uh, some of the, the background behind it. I, it. It has clarified a few things for me that I didn't understand and realize, yeah, especially like the, the, the following issue, the followers issues, the, uh, the likes. Uh, it, you, you have to want, you know, at first I thought, okay, those are features that are coming and they never came and they never came. And <laughs> now I understand that it was by design. That, that's, that's why. So yeah, folks, if you're going to check out micro.blog and, and, but do it after listening to this interview and keep in mind the lot of things that you think maybe should be there, aren't there for a good reason. Really mm. intriguing. Um, I'm Chuck Joyner on micro.blog. There's a big surprise. Um, <laughs> do, do you two want to remain stealth or do you mind sharing? Do you <laughs> We're, we couldn't be stealth if we wanted to be, I think. <laughs> uh, especially Manton is Manton on micro.blog. I'm MacGenie on micro.blog, which was my Twitter handle. And I'm still kind of sorry I didn't take my own name back in 2007. Cause, but MacGenie is me, and I've realized people just associate me with that name. So I kept it on micro.blog, and it also does make it easier for things like cross-posting, because uh, cross-posting at uh, 
microdot blog post that has some at names in it. If they match up with them at names in Twitter, you know, they'll, they'll be linked. So, um, but yes, that's where that, that's the best place to find us. We're there all the time. <laughs> and uh, also, you know, if you have questions about, is this a feature or a coming feature or, or is this part of the design? Um, we have an at help account and people are not shy about telling us the features they would like. And we are all ears because it helps us, you know, to figure out where to put our, our very limited programming resources. And, you know, that we do have some things that we think will not change, but, you know, we're always open to hearing people's opinions on what, what they'd like to see and why. Perfect. Gene, it's always a pleasure. Thanks so much for, for being here and for dragging Manton along with you. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for having and, me. <laughs> thanks for having and, me. It's been great. Yeah, and, and Manton, this is your first time. I hope you will come back, um, you know, just to to share thoughts on on anything, blogging or micro.blog or anything else. Uh, you, you definitely have a little bit different perspective on things, and I think we can all learn from you a little bit. Cool. Sure. Yeah, anytime. Happy to. Great. Careful what you offer. What you offer, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> folks. I'm Chuck Joyner. This is Mac Voices. I've learned a lot here about Micro Dot Blog, and and I'm going to change the way that I use it. And I hope you will go and explore it a little bit for yourselves. Until the next time, and as always, thanks for watching. Visit MacVoices.com for show notes and to connect with Chuck on social media. Get involved in our Facebook group or like our Facebook page. And get more out of your Apple tech with Mac Voices Magazine, free on Flipboard and on the web. And if you find value in it all, consider supporting us through either our Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash macvoices, or by making a one-time donation via the PayPal link on our front page and in the show notes of each episode. You will join these fine people who help bring you Mac Voices. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media at backbeatmedia.com. Bandwidth provided by Cashfly at cashfly.com.